Well, first of all, the vaccines are safe. They're very effective and they're uh, free. That's always a good thing and very accessible. Um, furthermore, we do know from our experiences in the past, over the past year, that this virus does cause um, death and it does cause uh, sometimes extremely severe disease, particularly in people with underlying conditions, but even in healthy people, it can cause uh, severe illness and potentially death. Um, there's also a condition called long COVID, where someone gets COVID and they continue to, uh, they recover, but they continue to have uh, troubling symptoms, uh, such as cognitive or mental um, mental dysfunction in the sense of, of thinking, th problems thinking with memory, uh, cardiac inflammation, uh, blood pressure dysregulation or the blood pressure goes out of whack. Uh, other uh, lung damage is another possibility, even, even young people can have that. And in fact, um, as we speak, two million people in the U uh, United Kingdom have been diagnosed with long COVID. So it's not unusual. It's, um, it's not rare, but a bit, so it does happen. And mild, the, the other problem is this disease is capable of um, causing almost no symptoms, or none at all, really, in some people, all the way to severe disease. So if you're not vaccinated and you're exposed and you, you have a healthy response to the vaccine, va the virus, sorry, and um, you're capable, even though you don't feel sick, you're capable of giving this to someone who is also not vaccinated. And therein lies the problem. Without being able to know that you have COVID, you can give this uh, virus to elderly people, people who are not able to get vaccinated. And so it's easily uh, contagious, especially the variants uh, as they are coming are more contagious and they're more virulent. In the state of Florida, um, approximately half of the uh, people have had at least one dose. Those over, I would say 12 and over, and not everyone. The vaccine is only available to those who are 12 and older. And of those, uh, approximately 40 to 50 percent have, um, have had the vaccine. And the same is true in Martin County. We're a little bit better. Um, we have 58% uh, of those 12 and older have received at least one dose of vaccine. Um, we do have variants in Martin County that, and we have them throughout Florida. In fact, Florida has been one of the places where there ha we have seen in the United States more, more variants per capita um, than other states, and perhaps due to the traveling, people traveling in and out from other places. So variants or mutations are here. However, the vaccine is effective against them, is very effective against them. Another issue that we see that's preventing that younger age group is the vaccine misinformation that is out there. Um, if you're on social media, you see one insane thing after another uh, being postulated about the vaccine. I think the one that is most, uh, even I myself, when I first heard about the vaccine, had some concerns about was it's done too fast, it was created, um, you know, they didn't go through the clinical trials like they were supposed to. And the fact is, this platform for delivering um, vaccines was, has been in production for the last 20 years or so. So if you think about the vaccine as, a, as, as you would, say, a, a, a rocket, there's a payload on the top, but the rocket has, uh, has been developed and been used for 20 years. Um, so the platform of the, uh, the rocket for this vaccine was there and has been developing over the last 20 years. What the technology, what happened with the capsule, so to speak, is, or the, vac, the, the actual vac payload, so to speak, is that it, it doesn't have DNA in it. What it does is it has instructions, or messenger RNA, which is our instructions 
to your cell. So when that payload is delivered, it simply goes into the cell, not into the nucleus, which is where the DNA is, into the cell and tells the proteins in the cell, if you see this, react. So it gives the message. So the, the, um, the other thing is, was it, was it really tested properly on people? And in fact, the other thing that was, uh, was um, done was that simultaneous phases of testing were done. They were all done at the same time. Normally it's phase one, phase two, many people have heard all this blah, 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 it goes one thing after the other. But because of the timing and the urgency, these different phases were done at the same time or simultaneously, so that cut down the amount of time needed to test the vaccine safety. All of, the, all of the rules were followed and there was a lot of scrutiny to see that that happened. And in fact, many people, because this was a new disease and the vaccine was so important, volunteered. And it, that includes minorities. So these vaccines have been used, you know, in the clinical trial process on um, African Americans, Hispanic populations, um, American Indians, Asians. It's been a very eclectic group of people that, that volunteered to participate in the safety and efficacy trials for this vaccine. I think I would say check your facts. Go to, go to trusted websites where scientific information is, is being, I mean, Hopkins, Johns Hopkins, um, Johns Hopkins has a very good uh, section, Mythbusters. Johns Hopkins is a trusted organization. It's not a governmental organization. It's a medical organization. And, and then also the CDC, which is a governmental organization. But Ha, um, is also has myth busters, so to speak, on it. The World Health Organization has a myth busters. There's some really good resources out there. There's no virus in this vaccine. It does not enter the DNA in the cell. It just gives instructions to the cell. If you see this spike protein, it's an enemy, go after it. And then the cell produces the antibodies and the, and the body responds. So it's a set of instructions. The DNA is inside the nucleus. If you think of a, an egg, the DNA is in the yolk. The messenger RNA never goes into the yolk. It, it talks to the proteins in the white part of the egg. And, and it tells them, if you see this spike protein, go for it, get rid of it. So after you receive the, the vaccine, many people have side effects. And, and what that means is their body is actually building the army, the army that will respond should the COVID virus enter your body. It don't, you don't feel good for a day or so. Um, some people have no problems at all. I hit the bed for a day. I went to sleep in the afternoon, and my family knows if I ever go to bed during the day, I must be sick. So I had a very robust reaction and I was glad of that because that made me feel like if I am ever exposed to COVID, my body has been uh, primed and is ready to respond uh, to kill the, the virus and, or inactivate the virus and remove it from you know, causing me any, any, any sickness. Some people um, will get the vaccine and they will also get COVID. So the vaccine, no vaccine is perfect. So we have uh, roughly a 94, 90, 90 to 94% uh, success rate with the vaccine, but some people will not build enough of an immunity to prevent them from getting COVID virus when they're exposed. And those are called uh, in the media breakthrough cases. They simply represent the um, rare person that does not build an immunity that's adequate uh, to um, prevent them from getting COVID. 
What the vaccine does a really good job of, though, is um, it does minimize the hospitalizations and the deaths. So having a vaccine helps you. Whether it pre completely protects you or not, it should help you to have either a less severe case or to uh, prevent you from being hospitalized or from death. The, the recommendation is to get vaccinated even if you've had COVID. Um, and so far, we think the immunity is boosted by having that um, vaccine, but they should be working with a physician. And the recommendation is still that anybody who has had COVID infection should also get two vaccines. Uh, so far, the research is um, suggesting that that, that is uh, the thing to do, that in fact, for whatever reason, the, um, the getting that vaccine seems to improve the symptoms and or correct the long haul uh, or long COVID uh, symptoms. If you haven't been vaccinated and you haven't had COVID, you are the target for the virus. So you'll, you are more likely to get COVID than, than um, somebody who's been vaccinated. So it's a matter of time, really, until you get infected. It's the younger crowd, so now you are what we call the susceptibles. And if exposed, you have nothing to stop you from being infected. So it's time to get vaccinated. It's time to start thinking about, you know, this is, is a societal issue, not as a me issue or it's, you know, because we tend to think about, for me, it's no big deal. I don't need to worry about that because I'm strong, I'm healthy, et cetera. And that's, that's maybe true, but you're not in an island under yourself. You're surrounded by people. So, and you don't want to get this and get long COVID because it could really mess up your life. You know, it could slow you down. You may need to go back to work. You may need to, to bring home the bacon. So there's, you are the target for the virus at this point and it's time to get vaccinated. The only way we're going to return to normal is through vaccination.